So here we are going to solve the fourth question in the regression examples. What we need is a file and you can find the link, the file linked on the Eclair web page. And on here we will find data from one year, 2009, so we are having cross-section data. And the data are carbon dioxide dioxide emissions and cross domestic product data for 39 European countries. So what we are supposed to do is to produce a scatter plot, run a regression of CO2 on GDP and calculate a correlation coefficient. So let's do that. Well prepared as I am, I have of course the data file here. So first thing was a scatter diagram done that before. That is quite frankly a piece of cake. Okay, and here we go. Now, which, it, which is which we can see from the data that the emissions, that is what we have on the horizontal axis. The GDP is what we have on the vertical axis here. So we have a scatter diagram. Now, it, really what we clearly see is there's some positive relationship here. So let's leave it at, at that for the time being. So here's our scatter diagram. Answer to question one. So question, next question, construct a regression line. So for a regression line, what we first want to do is we want to, to figure out what it is we are doing. And it's said here CO2 on GDP. So basically we are running a re regression. CO2 for the i country is a linear function of the GDP measure for that i function. By the way, in the Excel file, you can find detailed information on the data uh, here on the right hand side. So that's what we that's what we have, okay. And then that's the slope, and that's the alpha. Clearly, that's going to be the beta. It's going to be positive. Looking at our data, when we represent data graphically, the way how we usually do that is that the dependent, well, what is the dependent variable here, the CO2 emissions, is on the vertical axis. So we would have to flip that scatter graph around. Let's briefly talk about why does it make sense to have CO2 as the dependent variable and GDP as the explanatory variable. Well, we know most of CO2 emissions come from industrial production, transport and home uses, okay, heating your home. And I think it's possibly quite plausible that we have high emissions because we have a large GDP and not vice versa. We're not going to have a large GDP because we emit a lot. Okay, that would be pretty devastating looking into the future. So let's run this regression. And we are meant to calculate a correlation coefficient. Actually we'll do that first. Let's calculate a correlation coefficient first because we've already done that before. We use our correl function and we merely need to highlight the columns and close. So what do we get? 95, 0.95. Okay, so we should have write that down. The correlation is 0.95. So it's very strongly positive. Now the regression. Let me just delete this guy. Now we could again, as for question 3, calculate the, uh, the coefficient separately from our understanding that the slope is covariance divided by the variance of the explanatory variable, but we can use a different tool. I'll show you how to calculate regressions in Excel. Under data, I have an option that's called data analysis, and we're going to go there in a second. Now if you don't see that under data, data analysis, what you have to do first is go to file add-ins and um, was it sorry not file add-ins but you go to file 
options, then here in Excel options you have an add in option, okay, and then what you need to do is we need that analysis tool pack and uh, you need to highlight it and then click OK. And that should make that data analysis package available under data. So once you have that, there's all sorts of fun things you can do. We'll want a regression, we click OK. We're being asked for two things, the input range, Y. Now that's the dependent variable we need to think about. We said depending dependent variable was emission, so we highlight that column. And then the explanatory variable that for the GDP. I do that. Now a couple of options. We, you can leave that all unticked. New worksheet. Um, let's say regression one. We save the result on the new worksheet. And we want a line fit plot. So tick that box here. And we'll say OK. And here we go. OK. So we have our new we have our regression results. You can see the coefficient, that's the intercept, and that's the coefficient to the x variable, that is positive. Now it looks very small, it has that e to the negative 7 at the back, but it is clearly significant. You see we have a t stat of 18, p value of basically 0. The very small value comes from the very different scaling of the variables, okay, because the the GDP variable is so much larger in, in absolute values. And so we can see our predicted values, that's the red ones. Perhaps let's do the uh, the trick we did before. Let's see it. Oh, we can get that going. We highlight the red series, format data series, mark options, non and solid line. Here we go. Okay, so we now get this. Actually, I may also want to change the color of the line. Oh, nice green. Here we go. This is our relationship. And what you can see here is that our data have a quite peculiar pattern. Right? The blue dots are all the observations. We have a lot of observations. We're fairly small. Remember, our x variable is GDP. A very small GDP here, and then a few countries, the bigger countries, which go, uh, which go up here. That can sometimes cause problem for regressions. Okay, especially these values which are very, very far out in terms of the x value. They become extremely important in determining the outcome of the regression. Sometimes they're called leverage points. And there may be reasons you want to avoid that. And this is the context under which you are now, in part two, asked to also repeat this exercise, but now with using the natural log of both series. So let's do that. Okay, so we calculate the natural log of both series. First, we go to our data, they're here in Q4. Uh, let me actually just take that correlation calculation into a different field. So we will calculate the log of emissions and the oops, log of emissions and the log of GDP. Okay. And what we need the MATLAB function for log is log. Highlight emissions here and here. Now we can just cop copy that across and just check. Yes, indeed, that's log of GDP. And then we copy all of these guys down here. Okay, so what we can now do is we can actually copy the correlation field over here. And what we get is the correlation of the log values. So the correlation of the log values is 0 0.956. So it's even a little stronger. That's, uh, so that was the, the correlation. Right, let's use R for the sample correlation. And then we have another R, and that was 0 
R and let's call it LN for using the logarithmic values 0.9 let me confirm again 956 956 okay and we could calculate the scatter diagram but we'll run the regression straight because we know we will get a scatter diagram as an output there as well so we'll go to data again data analysis regression still remembers everything from before but now our y range we want the log of the emissions and as our x range we want the log of GDP and going here everything else will always be the same just that we want the output in a new sheet here we go let us make this a little bigger again so you can see uh, Excel isn't always that clever it has a lot of white space I'll change I want to change the axis um, not the chart area format axis and uh, the minimum value will say uh, actually 8.5 for the horizontal axis could have chosen 9 as well and the y axis we can also restrict a little bit we can say from let's see what can we say from 2.5 as the smallest value here we go and now I'm gonna change to a line queen again here we go so now what you can see the main difference between this regression and this one is that when we use the logarithmic values the points don't bunch together so much anymore in both cases i think we can see some sort of linear relationship between the two variables but this linear relationship in the logs has the explanatory variable distributed more evenly across the line and that has some advantages i.e. most importantly that there, there aren't so many individual observations which are particularly important okay. and that was question 4